Okay, welcome back to this Bucket plugin development tutorial. In this part we're going to be pretty much directly carrying on from part one. So what we're going to do here, after we've established that the person that sent the command is actually a player and not the console or something else, another plugin for example, um, we're going to check to see if they are already on that list that I mentioned. And if they are not, we're going to add them to it. And if they are, we're going to remove them from it. So but the reason we're doing that is so that it'll act as a toggle. So essentially entering the command once will put them on the list, um, and then entering it again will remove them from it, therefore turning off the complicated feature that we're going to make. It's not, not that complicated, but well. Okay, so what we're going to do is check to see if the list, so we'll just get the list first, so the list is stored in the plugin, and then it's just enabled players, which is that there. So we'll check to see if that, actually what we should do first is define the player name. So just under where we define the player, let's create a new string, and we'll call that player name, and that's going to be equal to player get name. So then down here we can check if the list contains the player name, and if it does, we're going to remove the player name. So enabled players remove player name. So then they won't be in the list. Otherwise, we're going to add them to it. I hope that's right. Add player name, like so. So if they are on the list, we remove them. If they're not, we add them. So then here, we've enabled the feature for them. And then here, no, sorry, the other way around. <laughs> here, we've turned off the exploding arrows. And then here, we've turned it on. So what we need to do is show a message to the player. So here, under the remove line, we can send them, not plugin, we can send them a message by doing player send message, not send block change send message um, and we'll make this green because it's not an error, it's a good thing so we'll make it chat color green and then we'll just say exploding um, arrows disabled yeah doesn't have to be that clever, just has to let them know it's worked. So then down here we can do the same thing but the opposite. Again, not plugin. Ah, play. I can't type today. Player, send message, green again, chat color green, and then we'll say um, exploding arrows enabled be careful. Okay, there we go. Um, one last thing. By default this method will return false which means that the usage information will be shown. Uh, and by the way, usage information I mean this line here. So if you enter the command that will come up. So to prevent that happening we want to have this return true. Okay, so that's pretty much done. So what we can do now is give this a test by exporting it. So we'll just export the plugin hit finish and it's exported so then we'll try and start up the server and see if we get any errors so I'm already in the folder so what I'll do is just enter the command to start the server which I should have had prepared really but never mind there we go hopefully that's right so we'll start it up and see if we get any errors and most importantly see if we get the enabled message um, so while that's doing that there we go so we've got exploding arrows has been enabled so now we can test out the commands because we should get the message in game um, and just to test our error condition what we can do is enter it in here so the command was exploding arrows so if I enter that you can see we get this message here it might be a bit hard to see but it says sorry this command can only be used in game which is what we entered so that's good and if we just come across to the game and I'll join the server like so I'm underwater that's not good Let's just go over here and it's got a tree, I'll be safe. So let's enter the command which is exploding arrows, exploding arrows enabled. If we enter the same command again, disabled. So this will work on a per player basis because we're checking if this current player's name is in that list. So the next thing we need to do is actually code the features to make arrows explode. So let's just disconnect from the server and we'll just turn it off. So let's hit stop, and let's go across to our code again. So 
So now that the command's done, we can close this executor because there's nothing more to be done with that. And we're going to go across to our listener, not our listener, we're going to create our listener. I meant go across to our uh, main class. Anyway, so let's create a new f a new class to handle the various events that we need to use. So we'll create a new class like so. And this is going to be called, uh, I don't know, exploding arrows listener. Why not? So then we'll just click finish and this will appear. And this class needs to implement uh, the uh, listener class, like so. And we're going to be listening for two events here. The main one being the projectile hit event, um, and the other one being the um, entity shoot bow event, which is fired when a player shoots the bow. But we'll deal with the explosions first. So let's just create the two methods to listen for the two events that we're using. So we'll just create those. They both have to be public, both have to be void, and we're going to call these the old naming convention because I got used to it. Also, it makes quite a lot of sense. So anyway, so first one is the projectile hit event. So we'll call this on projectile hit, and we're going to pass in the projectile hit event, and we're going to call that event. Now this event unlike the others we've dealt with so far, can't be cancelled, which means that we don't have to do the old event is cancelled return thing at the top. If you just do event and look for the is sort of starting methods, um, there is no is cancelled. Because obviously if you cancel his events, what's going to happen to the projectile? It doesn't make any sense. Okay, so what we need to do is make sure that the uh, actual project projectile itself is um, is you know a arrow and not something else. So the way we do that is by getting the entity, which is the projectile. So if we just create a new variable called entity or of type entity, like so, and we'll call this entity, and we're going to set this equal to event get entity. And then what we can do is check if entity is an instance of an arrow we can do some things could have spelled instance wrong s t a n that's still wrong let's just start again instance of there we go and that will need to be imported as will that from bucket be careful, by the way, that the entities or some things aren't always the top one. If you import these others, it won't make any sense and it won't work. Um, and also, I spelled that wrong. Okay, there we go. So, if the entity is an arrow, we can then check to make sure that it was shot by a player, um, because skeletons shooting them would be rather bad. So, what we can do, as well as making sure it's an arrow, is entity get shooter. Okay, that's not quite what I wanted, so let's just delete that, and we'll do it in here, in here, because then we already know it's a um, arrow. So actually, let's what we'll do is create an arrow variable. So let's just call, make it the type arrow, and we'll make it the cast of the entity, like so. So essentially, that's exactly the same thing as we did with the player in the command um, class. Okay, so then we can do what I was going to do a moment ago, but now inside here. If entity get shooter, actually, let's create um, a player or another entity, this will have to be actually. So let's create another entity, which is going to be the shooter, shooter, like so. And this will be equal to entity, or actually that will be equal to arrow. Sorry, I'm getting all confused. Arrow get shooter. There we go. And we don't want my entity there. Right. Okay, that's good. So now we've got the shooter. We can check to see if it's an instance of the player. So we can do if shooter instance of player. There we go. And we just have to import that. So actually, we can just do away with the um, the entity thing there and shoot a variable even and just do it like that which will be a little bit easier 
So inside of here, now we can define a player variable, which is going to be equal to the cast to player of the shooter. So actually, sorry, no, I'm being a fool again. We did need that there, so we can cast it. Okay. Oh dear, not a good day today. Okay, so th there. That's right now. <laughs> so essentially that is the same as we're doing above, except now it's from the player instead of the arrow. So once we're in here, we've established that the entity that hit something was in fact an, um, an arrow, and that the person or the thing that shot it was actually a player. So then what we need to do is check to see if the list of names with exploding arrows enabled is, or, you know, is, contains the player that shot it. So then we can create an explosion. So what we're going to do is modify this in the same way as we did with our um, command handler so that we can accept the plugin, so that we can access our list. So what I'm actually going to do is just copy this, and then we're going to create a public constructor, which will accept the exploding arrows plugin variable, and that will set it to a private property, private exploding arrows, and that's going to be called plugin, so this is exactly the same as we were doing before. Oops, 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 oops. Plugin equals plugin, plug on, and I spelled plugin wrong. Okay, there we go. So now down here, we can check if plugin um, enabled players was the array list contains uh, the player, and then we'll just get their name because we're storing the name, not the actual player object. So get name. And if it does contain it, we're going to create an explosion where the arrow landed. So the way we can do that is by getting the world that the player was in, because oops, because the um, create explosion methods are all from the world object. So we could do player player get world create explosion. Now this takes two parameters. The first one being a location. So we'll just skip over that for now. I'll just write lock, so as in short for location. Second one being a floating point number, um, and that controls the size of the explosion. So if, as a sort of reference point, X TNT explosions are about four. So just for a bit more fun, we're going to set this to five, F, which means float. Or you can do 5.0, which I believe does the same thing. Anyway, so this location is just something that represents a a point, you know, a coordinate in the map, in the world. So what we can do is actually use the location of the arrow here. So the way we do that is just by doing arrow get location, like so. And now this should pretty much work. So let's just explore, e export, export this one more time, and we'll give it a quick test before we skip on to the next part. So let's start up the server again, hopefully we won't get any errors. So to register the event, you do this which I'm sure you knew and were screaming at me when I said I was, it was ready to test. Priority equals event priority and we'll just set this to, let's say, normal. Priority normal. So what we need to do now is register our event listener with the actual um, with the actual server. So, let's just go to the main plugin class, because that's where we're going to be doing that. And just before we define, well actually just after we define the command, let's register our listeners. And the way we do that is from the plugin manager. So we can get to that from the server. So we can do this, uh, get server, get plugin manager. And we're going, to, we're going to store that in a variable, like so. And we'll call it manager just for the sake of it. And that'll need to be imported. So there we go. So now we've got that, we can use that to register our events handler. Um, why hasn't that worked? Because I've spelled manager wrong. Okay, manager register events. 
and our listener is a new instance of our exploding arrows listener which needs the actual plugin passing in and our plugin is just this again okay so that's that done we should be ready to export this now and give it a quick test so I've already prepared myself on the server with a couple of arrows so let's just export it and we'll just give the server oh, the servers running so let's just stop that uh, I just typed in the wrong window that was good so let's stop the server give it a restart not sure why it was running but okay I guess I forgot so that started up successfully so that's good so let's go to the game and we'll log in okay there we go so let's just shoot a few arrows I'll just aim for this tree so with the plugin disabled no explosion that's good turn on the feature try again and there was the explosion so as you can see that is pretty much working if I just turn it off again so we do that disabled nothing happened enabled kaboom I have to say exploding arrows are quite a lot of fun and there is one thing to note by the way I'm not sure if you saw then but the explosion actually caused the arrow to fly over there if you don't do the shooter instance of player check when those arrows land again from the explosion it'll create another explosion some iron there so you get sort of a infinite I died an infinite kind of explosion chain um, which you obviously don't want that's pretty terrible can I get my bow back there's one more thing I want to try um, oops actually there isn't that's basically that isn't it um, so yeah there you go that's command toggles um, okay so just to sum up what we've covered in this video is how to create an exploding arrows plugin which is pretty fun exploding arrows really should be in the game because that is quite addictive anyway that's basically that and in future videos what we're going to be covering is how to enable and disable this or you know allow certain players to use this obviously it's quite a destructive feature so you maybe don't want everyone getting their hands on it so yeah I'm gonna die again oh no okay right so thank you for watching and come back for future videos where I can't climb this little hill <laughs> no where we will um, make some more fun plugins Okay, there you go. Thank you for watching and goodbye.